Now let us talk about the shotgun sequencing. The shotgun sequencing is introduced by Sanger et al. in 1977 for sequencing of genomes but nowadays the shotgun sequencing is modified in many tone and we get many many more advanced type of shotgun sequencing now the basic idea of shotgun sequencing is to obtain a random sequence reads from the genome right so this is the basic it's a random sequencing it's not a kind of sequential sequencing that we have seen in case of chromosomal walking or in case of sanger sequencing now this shotgun sequencing can be used for large uh, sequences for long uh, dna regions that's the advantage of shotgun sequencing over sanger sequencing now what is the method is simply it it is more uh, challenging for the complex genome so what we need to do we need to take we just uh, use restriction enzymes to simply cleave our dna strands first into small segments so that's a simple like shotgun so this shot and fire it and it is shear into small pieces then what we'll take we take these pieces onto our hand then again what we need to do we need to clone them into the bacterial vectors or back vectors or which is called bacterial artificial chromosome vectors then we again select it we sequence it and we take back again we'll cleave it with another round of restriction enzymes to get much more small fragments of that then we again clone it into the back vector and again we take those fragments and we take again we sequence for it and we again cleave them into smaller fragments which are called the dna sequences now we take all the sequences and again clone them in back vector so we are simply uh, cleaving the dna sequence into smaller fragments as we are going at the bottom we are cleaving into smaller and smaller pieces and uh, we we don't stop until we get smaller dna fragments or smaller dna regions now once we get the small dna regions we take all of these regions we sequence them and then we try to align those sequences now remember one thing which is very very important sequencing can be done sequencing method is totally different that we need to take the small segment if we get a very small segment then we can easily sequence it using di deoxy or sanger method of dna sequencing but for the sanger method of dna sequencing we need very small piece of dna we cannot do it for a whole chromosome so what we need to do once we want to sequence the whole chromosome we need to fragmentize it into smaller fragments until we get the small fragments of Uh, DNA. Once we get small fragments of the DNA, then we can use Sanger method of sequencing to get the sequence. Now, once we get uh, the sequences using Sanger method, then we can use overlapping segments and overlapping regions. And using these overlapping regions, we can actually construct the map of the genome. So that's the process. Because uh, once we have only small region of the DNA, sequencing it will give us the total map of the chromosome. Now, if we are having a large chromosome like that, and we fragment it into smaller pieces, and if we know all the sequences that is not the end there is a more task of arranging the sequences so that we get the whole mapping of the chromosome so this mapping is also important so not only the sequencing is the end we need to map the chromosome now the mapping is far more challenging than the sequencing purpose so once we get the sequence uh, once we get the overlapping regions we start to make this map by overlapping